This is the future. Now I have seen a lot of misconceptions about druids in Diablo 4 and I just want to share my experience playing this amazing class. I know there are many Diablo 4 druid guides out there already, but I want to share my progression in the game with druid. How I obtain items easily to level my character and get good damage and survivability to somehow solo most of the content of Diablo 4. My name in the game is Primal Yogi, and I'm just a chill bear who loves my druid, and I hope that this video will change the way that you see druid. First of all, what can you expect from playing the druid class? As much as I love the druid class, I'm not going to sugarcoat anything here. I think druid is a versatile class as you can build for pure bear, pure wolf, or a mix of both shape-shifting, or you can go for an elemental shaman build. At first, I was going for an elemental shaman build as somehow, tornado does deal a lot of damage and I thought it would be better to spec on something that could help me progress throughout the campaign before I experimented on builds in the endgame, however, I just can't get myself into playing a sorcerer kind of gameplay in my druid. I played this class because I want to be a fucking bear, so, then I started a pure bear build with grizzly rage but man, it's so freaking slow. To be honest, this is the weakest part of starting as a druid since Rebear is the best option, but it's slow and his moves are more defined. While playing as a barbarian, it was like always a speed run with whirlwind and death blow but, playing as a Rebear druid is slow. He is built like a tank that is slow but hits hard and can't be toppled easily, why not try a werewolf build then? I also tried that build, with a poison creeper based setup that has rabies and all that damage over time but, I just can't seem to get over the clearing capability of pulverizing werebear. Eventually, I ended up getting some werewolf skills in the process just to help out my rebear, and this is how my build came to life. Before we proceed to skills, I would like to talk about aspects first. Another reason why I decided to start focusing on rebear is because most of the aspects farmable early are for rebear, well, not all as there are also for wolf and shaman, but most of the powerful and helpful ones involved earth and rebear to be exact. For the defensive aspect, get aspect of the protector as early as possible since this will help you a lot in terms of survivability. Just a quick tip, if you want to know the dungeon location of the aspect, then just simply pin an aspect then check it out on your map. Next is the earthen bulwark aspect. This gives you 9 seconds of earthen bulwark, which is by far the tankiest skill I have seen in the game. It gives you a barrier that absorbs damage, and it also gives you the unstoppable bonus that disables all crowd controlling effects. With this aspect, you can get rid of any barrier survivability. For offensive, the best starting is the edge master's aspect which increases your damage depending on how many resources you have. I've done some testing but I'm still confused whether or not this aspect works in your basic skills for the druid but pulverize seems to benefit from this. I think basic skills work too since it's considered a skill also right? Moving on, we got aspect of retaliation. This druid build has lots of fortification skills so this aspect will be available for you all the time. Just a quick tip, fortification damage reduction works if only you have more fortification than your current health. In my case. I have 2400 health on my druid which becomes 2800 when I'm rebear form due to the ursine strength key passive. If my health drops 2000, and my fortify value is greater now, then I receive the fortification bonus. This is especially helpful when my earthen bulwark is not active and it allows the aspect of retaliation to work its magic. Next, we got the aspect of ursine horror. We get this aspect not because of the damage it deals, but because it turns pulverize into an earth skill in many nodes in our skill tree boost our damage when we are casting earth skills. Also, I got night howler's aspect which fairly increases my critical chance. Aside from overpower, which is the main source of that nuke damage from pulverize, critical chance and damage bonus when enemies are healthy are a must for pulverize to dish out massive damage. My critical overpower can hit 30k to 50k using this setup and I know that is not much compared to the damage of other classes, but this is decent enough to clear mobs in tier 3 and even defeat bosses fast in dungeons. And for the last aspects, we go over utility and choose an aspect of quicksand which gives damage from earth skills slow percentage. This allows us to further boost the damage of our pulverize ability since we can also get a stat called bonus damage on an enemy when crowd controlled. Slow is a form of crowd control in the game, which means you gain additional damage from it when spec your pulverize with this aspect but, crowd control damage bonus doesn't work on bosses entirely, 
I have done several testings, and it seems like the only way to get bonus damage from crowd control in a boss fight is if when the boss gets stagger, you win that phase that the stagger meter gets full and the boss gets stunned. This is when I think the bonus from crowd control damage works but again, it needs more proof though as this is just based on my experience. Also, getting the burlistic aspect is worth it since pulverize is now a nerf skill, then this aspect will benefit it. The same goes for storm shifters aspect. I did replace grizzly rage with the hurricane because I don't like the slow gameplay of the full rubber build. Well, this build is also slow but hits hard, but slapping everything with a bare hand is much slower. And also, since Pulverize is a shape-shifting skill also, it then increases the rank hence increase the damage of Pulverize. The last piece of important aspect that you should get is the aspect that allows Pulverize to create Shock Wave. Now, there is no way to get this early in the game through finishing a dungeon map. And your best bet of getting this aspect is through O-Balls, doing world bosses, hell tides in endgame, gathering legions, grim favors from the tree of whispers, or even just simply going into dungeons, events, and activities in the game and praying for RNG that it drops. This is the only piece in this build that is somehow a little hard to find as you need a bit of luck. In my case, I got mine from murmuring O-Balls. Usually, this aspect drops from weapons and your best bet is to somehow trade your O-Balls with either two-handed or one-handed weapons. I got three of them with their one-handed axe, so I think you should try that one too. In terms of gears, there's nothing really special about my gear setup yet. It's just focus on getting as much damage for my pulverize. This means I have to prioritize damage on health enemies first, then core skill damage, repair or shape-shifting damage, overpower damage, then crowd control damage, and the rest are for bonuses such as critical chance, earth skill bonus, and damage bonus to slow and vulnerable enemies, and critical damage. And then the rest is all about ramping up my defense through all the elemental resistances I have. Right now, I'm sitting over 50% on all my elemental resistances in world tier 3, which is not that impressive, but it helps me a lot in terms of survivability, especially when the earthen bulwark is not active. Another tip that I highly recommend is keeping the mother's embrace ring with you. This is a guaranteed drop once you have complete the campaign by beating Lilith, and this ring is very helpful in resource generation, especially in dealing with mobs. In my opinion, it's better to keep this instead of upgrading to a ring with better stats because what's the use of nuking damage when you can't cast it often? This ring is quite helpful and reliable, and you can get a better version from this in a higher world tier. Hell, I even dropped this when I was opening a dungeon chest. And I even got one in the Ashava boss fight. One last thing is that, if you don't like the slow attack speed of two-handed axes, then stick with a staff that has better stats. So the basic gameplay of this build is to cast Earth Spike to build up spirit, then cast Tornado and Blood Howl to boost your damage with critical, invulnerability, and the increased rank. You can cast Deliberating Howl also to slow enemies, gain bonus damage reduction, and then, cast Earth and Bulwark every time you need it. If you got the fear status, or seems like the boss is doing a death blow, then earth and bulwark is your best escape. Now, let us see my skill tree. For the basic skill, I choose earth spike over maul, simply because it got a faster attack speed even using two handed weapons. This allows me to build up spirit fast and as well as apply slow on the enemies the earth skill with slow aspect. For the core ability it's a no brainer and it's the pulverize ability. I maxed it out, with all the enhancement, and this could go up to 9 ranks if my earth skill hits slowed enemies and I activate hurricane, if you can roll a plus rank for pulverize, then the better the damage output. I also added more damage to my core skills by picking the wild impulses passive. For the defensive skill, I pick earth and bulwark, blood howl, deliberating howl, and all their upgrades. This skill is just a personal preference as it does give me some room to gain resources and nuke enemies when I am hoarded but, you can replace Deliberating Howl with any skill that you think would fit your playstyle. You can replace this with Cyclone Armor for generally applying vulnerable status against mobs for 3 seconds which then boosts your damage by a ton. Okay, so in my offensive stat, you will mostly see Overpower having the most damage stats on here. At the moment, I have this stat right now because this is what RNG gave me with all the drops I have. However, I'm not dismissing the fact that vulnerable busted, and a great source of damage for this build. If you can somehow gain vulnerable stats along with damage on healthy and overpower on this build, then the nuking power of pulverize on this build will be insane. 
not just for general mobbing, but also for boss fights since you can apply vulnerable status constantly with Hurricane. I'm 100% positively sure that vulnerable status will be broken for this build and I will give an update on this once I have gathered some good gears for it. Getting back to the skill tree, I then pick Ancestral Fortitude Passive for more elemental resist. Probably I will be redistributing some of the skill points once I got all the skill points from my region's progress, yes. The only region I completed is Fractured Peaks at the moment, and right now, I stopped leveling and focus on finishing the region progress first. Moving on, I did not get anything from the companion tree but once I level up my druid to max, there are possible companion builds that I might try like that one that turned the wolves into a werewolf that spread rabies. I already have the aspect, but I don't want to mess up my bear build just yet because it's helping me progress to the game smoothly. Next is the Wrath skill which has the Hurricane. This ability is not only to gain more damage from Pulverize, but also to proc vulnerability that can give you 20% bonus damage against enemies. Now, my first early build was not just overpowering Pulverize, but also overpowering Hurricane. This passive right here called Provocation will allow Hurricanes to deal huge damage over time overpowered damage, but the requirement will lead to a snooze fest gameplay. I say this because at max rank, you would need to wait 20 seconds and you should stay in bear form to get the overpower on this passive. It's an absolute waiting game so instead of this, I remove the skill point and rely on the druid's boon. So at level 15, you will unlock spirit boons for the druid but for you to start the quest, you must need to clear the Turdolre stronghold first. A total of 4 boons can be acquired, and you would need at least 400 druidic spirit offerings to unlock all boons. You can select one boon per spirit, with an additional one for the spirit you choose. In my case, I choose the eagle for the increase in critical chance and critical damage, but you can do attack speed also for this build. For the deer spirit, I choose maximum spirit or, you can go with damage reduction against elite for this build. Then for the wolf boon, I choose the bolster skill and lastly, for the snake, I choose the obsidian slam which grants overpower to skill every 20 kills. The idea is to kill enemies with pulverize first, then once you build up the charges, you activate hurricane with overpower damage now. In addition, critical chance also works with hurricane's damage so after activating blood howl, you can also gain critical chance buff in your hurricane. This strategy is generally good for mobbing and clearing things easily. On the boss fight though, you would rely on hurricane for the vulnerability part. As I have said, Vulnerable status will be busted for this build and I'm hoping that I can show more of its damage potential as soon as I get some vulnerable stats on my gear. Also on the Wrath skill tree, I added elemental exposure for vulnerability and I'm planning to give it one more point for that 3 seconds in vulnerability. As much as I wanted to trust the natural hurricane chance to proc vulnerability, it's safer to give more chance so I can have vulnerable status active every time. Not to mention that the points I will get later will not be spent on any important nodes. Now, this build has no ultimate skills and instead, I pick some passive on the tree. Defiance and Natural Disaster are basically for increasing the damage output of both Hurricane and Pulverize, while Quick Shift is a nice passive to have as I'm always casting Blood Howl then shape shifting to Webair when casting Pulverize, giving me that insane additional 15% damage output. And lastly, for my key passive, I choose Ursine Strength. The Earth and my passive would be nice, but my lucky hit chance on my skill now sucks so I prefer having a constant damage boost than relying on a lucky hit. Currently, I'm level 67 and close to world tier 4 but, I am hoping to finish the region progress first as I need those extra points in my paragon board. Speaking of my paragon board, I have unlocked both Ancestral Guidance and Inner Beast first. Now, I know that this might not add well since Inner Beast will decrease your spirit consumption, while Ancestral Guidance will need you to consume at least 75 spirits to gain 30% damage boost in 5 seconds. Well, it works because of the Mother's Embrace Ring and how I build my Druid. This Druid build allows you to cast Pulverize multiple times and if you hit multiple targets, then your Mother's Embrace will restore spirit hence you will be getting the damage boost from Ancestral Guidance as often as possible. 
You can also gain spam ability for pulverize if you added more spirit on kill nodes in your paragon tree which are located in the ancestral guidance paragon board but, I'm aiming for more damage right now and once I unlocked more paragon points, I'm going with survival instinct for more damage when healthy and the legendary node called survival instinct which increases your damage while in bear form depending on the percent difference of you and your enemy's health. The idea is, I'm going to destroy enemies with the damage while healthy, then finish them off when they are unhealthy with this legendary note. I know I have lots of grinding to do for this build but so far, this tanky and huge nuke damage druid bear I have right now is the one helping me out progress in the game smoothly. This build allows me to face tank anything in the game including bosses. The only time I have run away in a fight was when fighting the butcher at level 66. Like hell, I was startled when this guy has fortify on the last health bar that I needed to do a hit and run strategy. Nonetheless, I killed the butcher, and aside from that, I have no issues with survivability and clear speed with this build. If you don't mind the movement, and it overshadows the raw damage and tankiness of this build, then this might be the best time to start your druid journey. Thank you so much for watching. Please do give me some feedbacks and suggestions to improve my build. I will truly appreciate it. Thanks again and I'll see you in my next Diablo 4 video.